Welcome to episode 29 of Chumpster Champions. I don't know why I always do that when I introduce. I'm like, welcome. I'm sort of trying to draw you in. Mm. We're playing um, Torquay away from home today and also away against Grimsby, like I said in the last episode, where we lost, unfortunately, in the FA Cup. I said I'd do a double live com today, and that is what I am doing. So since the last video where we lost... To... Come on, hurry up. Oh, it's, it's frozen. There we go. Thank you. Thank you for responding eventually. We lost 1-0 against Lincoln in the FA Cup first round. Disappointing, really, wasn't it? Uh, we then lost in the league. 2-1 against Macclesfield at home. A goal from Capitani wasn't enough to get any points for us in that game. But we managed to get a point against AFC Telford. So a bit of a struggle for those three games, really. Girdlestone with the goal. They did equalise in the last 10 minutes. But back to winning ways, 2-0 win against York. Very good win away from home because York are the top team in this division. Lewis and Locke getting a goal. His first goal for the club, actually. And then we beat Tamworth, 2-1. A couple goals from Harry Lewis. Enough to, to get the points there. And then a really good 3-1 win against Dagenham and Redbridge. Our second win against Dagenham and Redbridge this season. Of course, we beat them at the start of the season. And this was even better. 3-1 at home. Lewis, Holland with a penalty and Girdlestone with a goal and then unfortunately we uh, went out against Bristol Rovers in the FA Trophy South first round we drew 0-0 at home but then lost 1-0 away from home I did play a slightly weaker team in that game I didn't play Harry Lewis came off the bench but I didn't start Harry Lewis or Capitani in those two games um, I, the cliche I can use the cliche we can concentrate on the league now and we got back to winning ways in the league with a 2-0 win against Woking. Fellow um, promotion chasing Woking. A very good win. We've got a win and a draw against them. And they're in the top part of the table as well. Pigden and Tom Bides with the goals. Before one all draw against Sutton United. We've played Sutton United about 17 times already this series, I think. So we go into this these two games. These two away games at the end of December very well placed we're on 46 points as you can see here we're in the uh, in the playoff zone we beat Woking who are actually above us so it shows how well we're doing and Zegenham and Redbridge we've beaten them twice and they're above us some of the other teams have slipped down slightly since we last uh, since the last episode Chester have slipped down Halifax as well so it's going really well 13 wins 7 draws 6 defeats well, it's very close we can drop down all the way down to 8th I guess if we if results don't go our way, but we are between drifting between eighth and and second, I guess. Wrexham are easily going to run run away of it. They're 14 points ahead of Woking, so it is down to the playoffs. I can't believe it because the team just isn't. It shouldn't be this good, but once again, I've created a tactic that does grind out some points for us, and we're well above where we're meant to be. We're meant to be 23rd. We finished 19th last season. We have improved massively. And the players they've brought into the team have done well. The likes of Capitani and Pigden doing very well. So it's time to get on with the first match, really. This is the lineup. As you can see, some of the players are a bit tired after the last game two days ago against Sutton United. Uh, but I'm sticking with a similar lineup. I think it's actually the same lineup. Mambo's back in the team. I think I said in the last episode he was moaning a bit. About being out of the team so I've given him his chance and he's actually done reasonably well this is when he goes and makes three mistakes isn't it gives away five penalties Holland just isn't really good enough at the back I know he scored six goals but I think five of them are penalties so it really doesn't reflect how good he's been this season he's got a 6.74 average rating and he's had to rely on six goals you know how goals do boost defender ratings a bit too much sometimes and um, Sean Francis has been all right as well not amazing doesn't play as many games as he'd like I guess he has made 11 starts though uh, but now Mambo's back in the team with Haynes ever reliable Haynes he definitely has been my most reliable defender throughout the series he makes mistakes as well but I, I would say he is the most reliable let's do this then I've got Ricky Shakes back in the team locks on the bench today he's he's been reasonably good my only loan player um, I'll see if I can sign anyone else in January. It'd be nice to find someone who's really good in that central attacking playmaker role. Someone that really comes to the fore and uh, creates plenty of goals. Because Ricky Shakes has dropped off a bit this season, especially after his injury. 
which was a bit disappointing. Now I definitely use a lot more player instructions now as well to try and stop teams getting as many goals as they, they did last season. So we're playing a conventional 4-4-2 formation. Torquay, ex-league team, probably got more strength and money than us. But we're putting up a good fight against the, those sort of teams this season. So let's see what we can do. Let's try and get maximum points against Torquay and then go into the game against Grimsby. Who are, I thought Grimsby and Torquay would be towards the top, but they've actually, they're sort of, well, mid-table basically. We're doing much better than them so far this season. Now, Torquay currently seven points behind us as it stands in this game. So um, it's up to them. They can still get into the playoffs, I guess, especially if they get a goal here. Girderstone heads away. It's back in. Oh, surely that was offside. I think I was dropping too deep. I, I have set my players to drop very deep. It's, it's worked recently. Since those two defeats, I uh, decided to do that. And it has, as you can see, it has worked well. I've got points, but it does mean my uh, defensive line is very deep. And those two players, they're playing Hitchcock onside, who just really had the goal hang there to score which is a bit annoying but I'm going to stick with the counter at the moment uh oh here they come again Mambo please win it well done Shakes Haynes lumps it long to no one but Shakes is back on the ball into Capitani Tom Bides. this is nice play Shakes through to Pigton Shakes Lewis oh it's over from Capitani he does make he does miss some glorious chances from time to time Hasn't been as prolific as Harry Lewis this season, but I'm pleased that I've managed to find a, stri a second striker that can actually get a few goals. That's poor from Lovelock. I'm not sure what he was trying to do there, and this could be 2-0. It's a good save by Lovelock. He makes up for his error of just blasting it out wide for no apparent reason. And it's going to be half-time, and we're 1-0 down. Pigden having an awful game by the looks of it, rating-wise. So we need to pick this up and go a bit more attacking in this second half, I think. So we're going to push up and just be more attacking. See what we can do, because it's we've done nothing so far. Apart from that Capitani mistake, I guess, that was our chance to get back into the game. And we didn't take it. Tom Bides is tired, so I'm going to take him off for Gower, who hasn't really done anything for me. He's, he's experienced, he's my captain, but he hasn't done anything at all, let's be frank. So he is just a sub player, really, nowadays. Yeah, we'll go with that and try and get back into this game in the second half. I can't actually see. I had a shower. My, my eyes have been playing up. My left eye especially has been playing up all day. And then I had a shower and I'm blinded by water. And oh. Come on, Lewis. Whip it in. Sterling whips it in. Lewis is on the ball still. That's poor. That is poor from Lewis. And here they go. Oh, no. Where is my defence? It's off the post. We get lucky there. And Gower can't keep hold of the ball. They're still on the attack. We're all over the place now. I've gone attacking. You can see why I don't go attacking that often. Because we just fall apart at the back. We don't know what to do at all. But we have to. We have to go for it. Otherwise, we're not going to get back into this game. Hmm. Probably should bring Pigden off because he's having a really bad game. I'll bring Lock on and then play Lock in the middle and Shakes as a box to box midfielder. Let's try that, see what happens. I would bring Olamola on, but he's not scored. He's not really done anything for me. I think he's got the odd assist. But I think I'll leave Capitani and Lewis out there for a bit longer. And we're going to go fluid. Oh, what's going on? What? Oh. <laughs> Ugh, bizarre. Girdlestone's been really good. He won player of the month, actually. Just reminded me. Uh, yeah, we'll go with that. Sometimes, my, I don't know if it's my computer or football manager. It just seems to go really delally at times. Oh, Mambo's injured. I suppose I'll have to t use my last sub to take him off. Capitani's through. Capitani! Oh, he's hit the crossbar. Unlucky Capitani. They've had three clear-cut chances, we've had one, so they have been the better team in this game. But Capitani's had one chance, he's had a good effort there, which was unlucky. I think we're just going to have to go overload and see what happens, to be honest. Uh, it does sometimes work with this tactic. 
Not always, but it sometimes does. But they've got a chance here to make it two, and it's a good save, and it's a great tackle from number 16. I can't remember who that is. Get rid of the ball. Get it up the pitch to Harry Lewis. Oh, no, not another chance for Torquay. I don't think this is going to be our day, guys. Harry Lewis trying to fight back, but it's going to be two. It is, it's two, and it's all over. Disappointing game. Disappointing. I'm going to go back to attacking now because I don't want to lose by more than two here. It could be more than two anyway. Here they go again. Over the top. Where the hell was the defence? It was offside. I thought it was offside. There's still lots of highlights in this game. They have played very well today. 18 shots, 4 click up chances. Possession wise, we've shaded it slightly. But Haynes clears up there. Um, yeah, but it's not being it's not been our day at all. Off target, ten shots. We really have been pretty atrocious there. Capitani's through again. Sterling, <sighs> great. It's going to be three here. Ah, oh, Holland's going to get sent off. Last man back. Off he goes. Well, there's not much point actually doing anything. I'll just drop Kinnear back in there for the last couple of minutes. This is a really disappointing game. I'm so hopeful getting to the playoffs now, but there are some strong teams. It is so close, especially now. I'm going to say I'm not happy. Lovelock, 5.9, didn't have a good game at all. I don't know if those goals were really his mistakes or the game thought they were his mistakes. But we dropped down to fifth. We're still just about in the playoff zone. Halifax have a game in hand as to Chester. But it shows how close it is. Woking have now moved five points clear of us. Hmm. And Torquay in tenth. They're only four points behind it. Behind it. Aldershot in, in 11th. No, Macclesfield, sorry. See, my eyes have gone really dodgy. <laughs> Macclesfield on 41 points. They're in 11th. They're only five points for the playoffs. So it really is very close. I think we should probably finish top table if we uh, top half of the table. If we don't, then well, I'd be pretty disappointed, to be honest. So it's uh, I've got a lot of players with contracts expiring in six months, and I generally leave a bit longer because at this level they don't really move around so much. You can sort of let it run down all the way and then offer them a contract. Um, but I've just had a quick look. Harry Lewis just doesn't want to enter contract discussions because he doesn't think my squad's strong enough. So I think the only chance of keeping him now is literally by going up. I've, Harry Lewis, he's my star man. He really is. To be fair, he is much better than the rest of my squad. Uh, but other players I'd like to keep. But Tyrone Sterling, I've been impressed with him so far this season. So I'd certainly happily keep him. I don't want... I'll just reduce that to 5%, I think. Let's see what he says at that. 475. He wants... Oh, that's fine. Promotion wage rise of 5% is fine with me. Let's go down. Girdlestone's been good this year. I, I don't... I'd happily give him another contract. What's he on at the moment? 275. Let's see if he accepts the same, and then I'll... I mean, I don't mind giving them promotion wage rises. It keeps them happy if you've got something in there. Um, but he, yeah, he might accept that. Hopefully he will. Lovelock, I'm happy to give him another contract. He's apparently got the potential to be a decent keeper. Um, and, and if he's not, he can always be a backup. He actually wants less than he's earning at the moment, but maybe that's because he wants a promotion wage rise. And there's a few other things in there. If he wants less, fair, fair enough. Tom Bailey's hasn't really done much for me. And he's probably going to want quite a bit of money. So I think I'll let his contract run a bit. Palmer Samuels hasn't done anything. He's got potential, but he's just not developing at all. He's not done anything since he's come to me. He's, he's scored goals in the first season. He had a very good season. Last season, five goals in 34 games, mainly off the bench. And this season, he, I've not really played him, and he's not done anything. He's done quite well in the reserves by the looks of it. So he might get his chance at some point. But the, the three games that he has played in, he has missed some pretty bad chances. In terms of um, staff, I'll decide that at a later date. 
I thought I'd show you some other bits and pieces, what's going on in the save. Like training at the moment, I've got it on defending average and defensive set, defensive positioning. Uh, but we have been a bit poor from defensive set pieces lately, so I'm going to train them up for that game and also for the Chester one. Um, not that I don't think... I don't, there's not going to be any training between the Grimsby game and the Chester game. Older shot, I'm going to go attacking. Apparently the finances are not good. The projection, we're going to be in debt by 333,000, apparently. I, I don't know how that is possible. What will we spend? Expenditure, last month, 80 grand. This month, 78. It's only slightly in debt there, isn't it? So I don't. I think it's probably stadium thing. I don't know. I think the projection thing is always hard to... But it says we're, we're going to be in debt by 854k by April 2019. You can't predict. That's the way it is at the moment. But things change. It's likely to change. I don't know. What's our balance at the moment then? Are we in debt by... I think we're in debt. 65.66k. Never mind. We can change that by getting promoted. And if we were actually able to get through some FA Cup games, then we'd get a bit more money, wouldn't we? So here we go. Grimsby, who are in 13th place. They are 12 points behind us, so this really has to be a win. They've actually got Harry Hickford, who I'm unable to sign. Someone did point out that if you're a semi-pro club, a lot of players don't want to go to you because they see you as too low a level, and the clubs don't want them to go to you because you don't have good enough players but we are above Grimsby we're above Harry Hickford I'd love him in my team because he's class and we remember him from the first season he was really good so yeah it's unfortunate but we'll have to make do with Mambo although he's tired today so I won't be playing him Sean Francis is going to come into the team Holland is tired I'm going to put Matthew George on the bench he still hasn't played for me actually and nor has um, Hines actually I thought he had played I thought I'd brought Hines off the bench yeah, he has six sub appearances. I think it's because he's on loan, actually. He was on loan, he's just come back. It's not showing. Who else can we play? I think Matthew George played as well. Yeah, one sub appearance. Um, I think I will stick with the rest of the team the way it is. Yeah, maybe Gower out of the team and bring in McCassie. I'm tempted to try uh, Kyler Hines instead of Olamalo, Olamola as well, because he hasn't done anything. Time to try and beat Grimsby then. Oh, <laughs> those of you that manage at this level know it's tough. It, Money-wise, it's just awful. I just don't have any money. Um, I've asked the board numerous times for various things like training facilities, youth facilities, relaying the pitch, and you know, there's just no money for anything. And I'm predicted to finish bottom. It is, it's, I'm up against it. But I'm really happy as to how well I've been doing. But it's, I suppose I c it could go wrong from this stage forwards. Because we're halfway through the season now. It really is. Make or break. What am I doing here? I'm trying to click on things. It's not working. And if we lose the second game in a row here today. Then no, I won't. it's going to be tough to turn that around I think. I'm not going to drop as deep as I was. In fact, I'm not going to drop deep at all. Let's try that. Stick to positions, though. Let's let's be a bit more solid and see what happens. We're way above Grimsby in the table, but that just doesn't mean anything to us. We can struggle against teams a bit further down the league sometimes. We are inconsistent, but we've been more consistent this season, which is why we're up in fifth. But it would be nice to get a bit more consistency. Away from home, it's always going to be tough. Here they go on the attack, Grimsby, and it's 1-0. Good header. What a name. <laughs> and uh, we're up against it straight away in this game. It could be a second defeat in a row. If we can't turn this around now. Come on, guys. Let's, uh, let's get into this game. Francis heads away, but they're still on the attack. And it's a good save by Lovelock at his near post to keep that one out. Now corners were always a bit dodgy from corners. Not been as bad this season, but still a bit dodgy. So I think we've been more dodgy from free kicks actually recently. It's all Grimsby at this early stage in the game. They're all 
floating towards the ball here. Good tackle by... I uh, don't know who that was, but it was a good tackle anyway. It might have been Sterling. It may, have, may have been picked in, actually. But here they go again. Good header, Haynes. Shakes. Lewis, please do something. Oh, he went for it, didn't he? He went for it. I'm going to push higher up. And we're just going to go a bit more sort of open and attacking to try and get back into this game. Girdlestone throw into Capitani. Back to Girdlestone. Kinnear shakes. Tom Bides play it through. Lewis Capitani tackled. Oh, unlucky guys. Oh, Sterling's picked up a knock. It's lucky. I've got um, Matthew George on the bench today to come on for him. Sterling's really fit, actually. He just keeps going all the time. Played pretty much every single game, hasn't he? Free kick to them. Good head away by Shakes, but they're still on the ball. Knocked over the top. Well done, Francis. Tom Bailey's play it through. Smash it. He has done. It's to Lewis. Capitani can't get to it. Kinnear does. Tom Bailey's. Pigden. Lewis. Play it through, Capitani. What was that? That is an awful finish. Our second clear cut chance of the game. And we're 1 0 down at half time. Lewis, uh, I mean, Capitani let me down. I'm going to bring on Kalen Hines, who hasn't done anything this season. He's been on loan a couple of times, by the way. I'm not sure if I've mentioned that uh, at Lowestoft, but he only played two games. Like I said that he had to be a key player for them, and he only played two games and didn't score and got a 6.15 average rating. Okay, maybe it's not a good idea bringing, on, bringing him on, but here we go. Let's see what he can do. I'm going to go a bit more direct and try and get back into this game because it's a poor episode so far. We've conceded three goals and not scored, which is unusual for us. But here goes Lewis straight away. Can he get a goal? It's hit the post. It was. I think the keeper got a hand to it. That was a clear-cut chance, though. And... Ugh. We've had our chances to get back into this game. We haven't taken them. So if we do lose this, we've got only got ourselves to blame, really. And they can make it two here, and they do. It was a brilliant bit of play from them. Ah, uh, and I think that's it for us. We've dropped out the the uh, playoff zone of that, and we've got Chester in two days' time. Oh, it's going to be really tough, isn't it? Now, Tom Bides is tired. We'll bring on Locke. Hmm, it's not been a good episode. I... Please hit that like button if you feel sorry for me. Probably don't, do you? Not done enough in these games. Well, I have in terms of creating chances. We've created three clear-cut chances. Not three. Oh, it's a penalty. Was it Heinz? It's Heinz. I've just been bigging him up. And he's... Ah, oh, what? What? Girdlestone's been sent off. I thought, hey, what? I'm really confused. Did Girdlestone give away the penalty? Oh, dear. We're going to go 3-0 down and down to 10 men. It has not been a good day, guys. I had so much hope. I suppose the one consolation is it's away from home, but you can't always use that excuse, can you? It's two games away from home. We needed to get points to stay in the in the hunt for... Playoffs. Really wish I'd managed to hold out and get a win against Sutton United now, because that draw has meant we're, we've dropped out with these two defeats. It's very tight, as you can see. We're one point behind Dagenham and Redbridge in 47 as it stands. Hmm. It's frustrating. It is frustrating, and I need to try and formulate something that can prevent goals. John Lewis scores. <laughs> 3-0. Uh. Well, I think it's back to the drawing board in terms of the defence. Maybe maybe Mambo and Haynes is... Oh, I'm not actually playing Mambo today, am I? Francis. He's won a few headers, actually. But I don't know what his rating is. We'll see at the end. Lock through to Haynes. Can we get a consolation? His first touch was atrocious on the edge of the box there. This is going to be the end. 
It, we've had more possession, we've had the same number of shots. It's just not been our day whatsoever and I'm not pleased with the team. Uh, and two days time we've got Chester. Probably should stop chopping and changing the defence here. Like, just stick with one. Drop deeper, let's go for that. Drop deeper, use tighter marking. Be more disciplined, stick to position. Surely that will help our defence a bit. Maybe take away, close down more. Maybe we're running ourselves ragged doing that. Pump ball into box. I can't play short passing because at home I can't because the pitch is terrible. So I'm, I'm not sure what to do about the passing. Maybe just take away all of that, see what happens. Yeah, I'm going to see what happens against Chester. Wish me luck for the Chester game. I'm not sure when the next video will be. I guess in a few games time around here. And I hope to be still around the playoff zone, but we have dropped out and got we've got a minus five goal difference today. We're down to, to eight. We were on double figures. That was a miracle, but now it's gone back to, to eight, which is a shame. Please hit that like button. Please subscribe if you're new. Leave a comment in the comment section below. Say hi, I'll say hi back. See you soon, guys.